In this video, we're going to take a look at Greek New Testaments and look at the different options available today and help you to decide which one you should buy. Coming up right after this. <music> So like I mentioned, in this video we're going to take a look at the different Greek New Testaments that are out there and we're going to help you really think through which edition will be right for you. And I'm going to give you really three questions that are going to help you think through the question of how do I select a Greek New Testament. So, let's start off with the first question. So the first question is, should I get a Reader's Edition or should I get just a regular Greek New Testament? Personally, I am in favor of just getting a regular Greek New Testament and really just getting a lexicon, a reader's lexicon to go with it. And the reason for that is really simple. When you first start to learn Greek, you really don't know a lot of the words in the New Testament. You start off, you finish beginning Greek, you know all the words that occur 50 times or more. Sometimes you'll know a few more than that. But for the most part, there's still a lot of words to know. And that's why reader's editions are so helpful. They really fill the gap between your current knowledge and the ability to read. But the problem with the reader's edition is they end up becoming a bit of a crutch and you end up not really pursuing Greek and your skill with the language doesn't develop because you never drive yourself to a higher level of knowledge than what the reader's edition gives you. Sure, in the short term, it's really helpful, but long term, it's probably not gonna be as effective and efficient as it may be. And in fact, many people who start with a reader's edition never really progress their Greek very far because their level of skill doesn't develop. The best way to develop your skill with Biblical Greek is to let go of the tools and learn the words for yourself. And that's what I advocate in Master New Testament Greek. And I have a system that allows you to do this reasonably quickly. Over a three to four year period, you can learn all of the words in the Greek New Testament and be able to read it fluently. It's going to take a little time and it's going to take a little effort, but I can tell you from experience, this is how I did it, it is well worth that hard work. And then that skill, as that skill develops, it's going to serve you well throughout the rest of your life. So I don't recommend a reader's edition and I encourage you instead just to go directly to a Greek New Testament without a reader's edition. However, one day I will do a review of reader's editions and we'll talk about that here on this channel. In the meantime, in this video, we're going to look at just plain Greek New Testaments that are not reader's editions. Which brings us to the second question. The second question then refers to what text type should I choose from? And you really have four choices here. The first one is the text type that's found in the critical editions. That is the UBS, the Universal uh, Bible Society's Greek New Testament and the Nestle Aland 27th and 28th editions and earlier Greek New Testaments as well. These are the critical editions. Now these are by far the most widely used Greek New Testaments available and there's some good reason for that and we'll talk about that in just a moment. These are eclectic text types which means to say they don't really adhere to any one particular source. Instead, they really draw on a variety of texts from wherever they can come from in order to understand which texts best represent the original autographs. So that's the critical editions. The second text type is the majority text. Now this is also the Byzantine text type as well. They're quite widely used, they're fairly popular, and there's some interesting reasons why that's the case. The distinction with this set is that these follow the most numerous texts that are available today for scholars and critical scholars particularly to look at. So particularly then those, those texts tend to come from that Byzantine text tradition. Now that's the group of texts that were written during the time that the Roman Empire was in Constantinople which was later renamed Byzantium. Now during that period, there's about a thousand year period there where this was a, a city that enjoyed a, a fair degree of peace through that time and prosperity and therefore had a lot of scholars working consistently to copy the New Testament. So we have a lot of New Testament texts from this period of time that are all very consistent. There are issues, there are differences between them for sure, but they're very consistent particularly when they're compared to some of the earlier texts as well. So that's the majority text or Byzantine text tradition. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, do you mind hitting the like button and the subscribe button and the notification bell? That way when new videos come out, you'll be the first to hear about it. And also hitting like really helps this video get found by more people. 
Thanks very much. The third text type is the Society of Biblical Literature. They have a critical Greek New Testament of their own, which is very similar in many ways to the critical editions that we talked about earlier on. Now, there are some differences, though, and you do find sometimes where a word or something has changed in the SBL. For the most part, it's fairly consistent. Now, they started with a copy of Westcott and Hort, and then they compared that to the Byzantine text type, the NIV text type, that is the Greek text that was worked on for the NIV translation itself, and also Tregelles' text as well. Tregelles, as you'll see in a moment, was a 19th century uh, Greek textual critic who came up with his own Greek edition as well. Now, that is the SBL Greek New Testament, and we'll talk about that more in just a moment. The fourth text type to choose from is the Tyndale House Greek New Testament. Uh, this is the new kid on the block being published just a couple of years ago and it really comes from that same guy Tr Samuel Tregelles and the text that he put together but it does take a slightly different track to say the SBL and the critical editions in the sense that it's really focused on finding the oldest texts and comparing those with what Tregelles has to come to the best understanding of what the original autograph said. Now we should point out at this point that all of these different editions are all trying to get as close as possible to the original autographs, which means then that the differences between them is not as great as what you'll find in, say, an NIV versus a New American Standard. The differences are small, tiny, even insignificant for the most part, and all the editorial teams for each of these different texts were working to try and understand what is the best representation of the original autographs and they all approach this question using different methods. Now this then makes a difference when it comes to selecting a Greek New Testament. You have to choose from one of these different approaches to figuring out what the original autographs might have said. Let me just make one last statement here about these and that is that I want to encourage you not to make these into a religious war. Each of these are just different approaches to trying to solve the same problem. They all have pros and they all have cons. None of them is perfect. And we get to choose, in fact, we're really spoiled today with the riches of working between these different editions where we can actually look at what they all say and look at the manuscripts they have. And we can even go back and see which ones they chose and why. I mean, this is just unprecedented. And we are in a very fortunate time today where we get to make these kinds of decisions and distinctions. So let's not get split up over these different approaches. Choose one that you like and work with that. Now, before we get into these in a bit more detail, let me just mention that this video is sponsored by Logos Bible Software, and all of these different editions are available on Logos Bible Software, and you can even use the text comparison tool in Logos Bible Software to see the difference between these different tools. And I encourage you to do this because these this is a great way to look at the differences and you'll find there that the differences are not that great. Here, for instance, I'm showing you a comparison of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, where we do find a number of really interesting variations and we have to figure out what happened to these. And so Logos Bible Software is a great way to work out the differences between these editions. If you don't already have a copy of Logos Bible Software, let me encourage you to go and get a copy of the Fundamentals Edition, which is the very baseline edition uh, for $50, which is 50% off, and you get a free book with that as well if you use this code below, mntg.me slash Logos. Thank you very much to Logos Bible Software for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. So if you're looking to choose one of these different texts to purchase for yourself, there's really gonna be two things maybe three that are going to be an issue. It may be that if you're in seminary, your professor suggests you need to choose one of uh, choose a specific one, maybe the critical editions. And if that's the case, well, that's going to be your choice. But if you've got freedom to choose whichever edition you want, then it comes down really to two things. First, which text type you prefer. And secondly, what sort of formats are available for that text type. So let's talk about that for just a moment. When it comes to the critical editions, your choices really are the UBS or the Nestle Arland 28th edition. Now you can get the 27th edition as well. And in fact, that's what I have right here. This is a Biblia Sacra 
which they no longer publish, unfortunately, but which has Hebrew and Aramaic in the Old Testament and then a Greek New Testament, the Nestle Alan 27th edition in the New Testament. And you can see that I've had this rebound in a nice leather. I really like this. Uh, and it's got four ribbons down the bottom here rather than just the, the single ribbon that comes with the uh, UBS edition and the Nestle Alan as well. Uh, so you can see here that at the bottom of the page that I have with the Nestle Alan 27th and 28th edition, I have a full apparatus, which is a real benefit uh, to being able to look at the differences and then see all the variations in the different manuscripts. Now, in the 27th edition, this is a pretty complete manuscript. In the 28th edition, they have reduced it just a touch in some places where there is no real significance in having a large number of variations. So it's not a big difference, but it's just a, a very minor one uh, between the 27th and the 28th edition. In terms of the difference between the 27th and the 28th edition, there's not a lot. Uh, there are a total of 33 different changes. That's it, 33 differences between the 27th edition of the Nestle Arland and the 28th edition of the Nestle Arland, or between the 4th edition of the UBS and the 5th edition of the UBS. Just 23 changes. Five of those changes are in the book of James. Eight of those changes are in 1 Peter. 10 in 2 Peter. 4 in 1 John. 2 in 2 John. 1 in 3 John. And 3 in the book of Jude. So really the distinctions are very small. There's no differences outside of the Catholic epistles. So if you're looking at either of those editions, or maybe you can get a secondhand 27th edition, that would be fine. In fact, my personal preference is for the 27th edition of the Nestle Island over the 28th because of some of the choices in those in those 33 that they've made. For instance, where I talked about 1 Peter chapter 3, I don't like the edition or the modifications that they've made in there. And so I choose the 27th edition over the 28th edition. But I'm babbling, so let's move on. Let's talk about the what you get in terms of format here. This is the UBS 5th uh, edition, and you can see down the bottom here we have a very different apparatus. The apparatus here is really reduced in size. It's showing you just major differences. And then it's giving you a rating as to the certainty of that particular text type. The text itself, the, the font size, it's a pretty reasonable font size. The paper, though, I really don't like the paper. It's super thin, uh, very see-through, and so and it's very easy for markings and things like that to bleed through or even just press through as well. So I'm not a huge fan of the paper of these. The font face is okay, uh, and in the 27th edition, you really have a fantastic apparatus. In the UBS, you have an adequate apparatus if all you're doing is really translation type work and you just sort of want to look at some of the differences. Uh, but this is also a little thinner as well than what you get for the 28th edition. So that's the critical editions. So you're going to get a thinner paper. Uh, and the other thing I don't like about these is this ribbon. If you can see the ribbon, that is just looking nasty. And that happens regardless of how well you try to look after it. The way to get around that, of course, is to get some nail polish or even a lighter and just sort of, you know, melt that bottom piece there on or, or just lick a bit of nail polish on there to just harden the end of it. But I didn't do that and so it goes nasty. So now when it comes to the majority text or the Byzantine text tradition, I don't read a Byzantine edition, nor do I even own one, which is really bad. I really need to get one. Uh, so what I've done is I've asked uh, my friend and fellow YouTuber, Stephen Hackett, uh, if he'd be willing to chip in here and give his views on this because he does know a lot more than me about the different Byzantine tradition texts available. So here's what he says about them. I'd like to thank Daryl for the opportunity to share with you some of my favorite Greek New Testaments, which are um, in the Texas Receptus line or in the broader Byzantine stream. Uh, the first one I'll mention is the one that's put out by the Trinitarian Bible Society. Uh, what's nice about this is it's very affordable. It's only about $8. It has a nice clear print, um, about a nine point font, very well made and very, very affordable. So this is a very nice option. Uh, one of the other options that I like for uh, Texas Receptus Bible is Scrivener's Annotated Greek New Testament. What I like about this is it shows the differences between itself um, and some of the more, which is going to show you the difference between itself and some of the more critical editions. Um, so it has a very, very nice, generous font size, about a 13 point font size. This is a leather edition. Hard to find them in leather right now, but you can find the hardbacks or in paperback. The third one I'll mention is um, the one done by uh, Hodges and Farstad. This is more in the broader uh, Byzantine stream. 
Um, but what I like about this one is it is a very nice sewn binding, um, very clear font, and it has a, a much better apparatus um, than a lot of um, Greek New Testaments that you'll find either as a Textus Receptus or in the broader Byzantine stream. So this is also a very good option. Of the three, it's going to kind of come down to what your preferences are. As far as affordability and ease of getting your hands on, the one put out by the Trinitarian Bible Society is going to be your uh, best bet there. It does not have any kind of apparatus, though, so you'll never know if there's any differences between your uh, TR and some of the more critical editions. So for me personally, my two favorites are actually uh, Scrivener's Annotated Greek New Testament and um, the Hard Hodges and Farstad one. Now that's going to come down to personal preference for a lot of people. Some other people are going to pre prefer the one that's done by the Trinitarian Bible Society. And the difference is going to be, uh, are you concerned at all with knowing the differences between your TR and some of the more critical editions? If you're not concerned with that, this is your best option. It's very compact, sewn binding, very affordable. If you are interested in text critical issues like that and you want to be aware of those things, one of these two options are going to be a lot better for you. So you can see why I asked Stephen to share his views on this because he knows the stuff when it comes to these this text type and the editions that are available with this. So if you want more information about Byzantine text tradition uh, texts, he's done a bunch of reviews on his channel and I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below and I encourage you to go check it out and subscribe to his channel as well. Let's talk about the SBL Greek New Testament. Now the SBL Greek New Testament, I mentioned that it's very similar to the critical editions. It is, but there is one thing that really sets it apart in my personal opinion and that is that you can actually go and get it printed in whatever format you want. This is freely downloadable. So you can download a copy from the SBL website, and I'll leave a link in the description below, so you can go do that. And then you can literally just format it and get it printed wherever you want to do so. And in fact, I've got instructions on my website for how you can download and format and then even print your own Greek New Testament. I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. This is a Greek New Testament I had printed. Uh, you can see I've got wide margins here. It's still a fairly small form factor. I don't have a nice fancy cover on it. I was going to get it recovered in leather, but it's got a nice wide margin. It's got nice spacing between the lines, and I've been able to modify the, uh, the, the text type, the font face to suit myself. Uh, so I really like this edition, and I love the flexibility of being able to choose the way you want to have it, so you can have it however you want. So this is uh, my own Greek New Testament, uh, and I really like it, and I would encourage you, if you're really picky about a Greek New Testament and having the right format, then the SBL Greek New Testament is a fantastic choice, which you can get printed and even bound with a Hebrew edition. Again, I'll leave a link to that in the section below. Finally, that brings us to the Tyndale House Greek New Testament. And recently, I did a video talking about the Tyndale House Greek New Testament, how it got its text type, what some of the funny things like this symbol means and all those different elements and I'll leave a link uh, to that up here so you can go watch that video. This is really the new kid on the block when it comes to choosing a Greek New Testament and honestly I really like this text. It's very light inside when it comes to the apparatus so you do have an apparatus but it's very light, very small, uh, very brief. It's really just a representative uh, sampling, if you like, of the different texts that are in different manuscripts. So the apparatus is small, but it's, I think for most purposes, it's pretty much all you need. Not only that, you'll notice that the, the Tyndale House Greek New Testament has really nice paper. Uh, the paper is not super see-through, it's, it's reasonably opaque, which is nice. It's got a decent sort of weight to it. But yet, it's not an overly thick Greek New Testament. It also has a far better ribbon than the critical editions have. Um, and it's got a great font and, you know, really nice format. I really like having the wide margins. I like the paragraph differences here, how you've got the hanging margin uh, to indicate where the ancient texts had a new paragraph indicated. I really like that. Another philosophical thing I really like about the Greek New Testament created at Tyndale is that this was created by believing scholars, Bible scholars who are believers, who are trying to encourage you and I, those in the church, to read the New Testament in the original language. 
I like that. That's kind of what I'm all about. It's trying to help people to read the New Testament in the original languages. And so this really suits me in that sense. I like that philosophical approach. And I would encourage you too to consider learning to read the Greek New Testament. Now I've talked about that in the past. I'll leave a link to videos about that up above here. So which one of these do you like the most? I'd love to hear which is your go-to reader as well. I gotta say that for me, I really like the SBL Greek New Testament. I use the SBL Greek New Testament just about every day because it's got these wide margins and I can write in it and highlight it. And you know what, it cost me I think $10 to get this printed, so I can get another one if I don't, if, if I mess it up, it doesn't really matter. But I do, I must say, I'm using the Tyndale House Greek New Testament more and more every day. I do have a Nestle Alan 27th edition, my Greek and Hebrew Bible, I do use that occasionally. I hardly ever use a UBS now. Um, I don't really use the NA28 at all. Sometimes I'll look at it for the, the apparatus, but that's pretty much it. But what do you use? I'd love to hear from you. Leave a note in the comment section below. Let me know, and let me know why as well. I'd love to know from you which one of these you prefer. Now, if you can't read the New Testament in Greek yet, and you're watching this video going, yeah, it's all very nice for some, I really need a reader's edition, then can I encourage you to download my roadmap to mastery, which takes you through what the what basically needs to take place between uh, where you are right now, even if you've never learned the Greek alphabet, to being able to master the Greek of the New Testament. You can download this for free right now from mntg.me slash roadmap, and that will give you everything you need to just get an overview of what it's going to take to master the New Testament to be able to read it in Biblical Greek. So you too can go and choose one of these New Testaments, get it nicely rebound, and be able to enjoy reading it. So head to mntg.me slash roadmap today to get your free copy. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. We'll see you then.